Okay, let's take a quick look at some of the external features of the skull, okay? First we'll note by seeing this big giant bone that makes up what we consider the forehead. So the bone that makes up the forehead, we refer to that as the frontal bone, okay? We go to the posterior aspect of the skull, and the bone that makes up the posterior aspect of the skull, the back of your head is what you refer to as the occipital bone. If we look on a lateral aspect, I see this bone that makes up the majority of the top of our head, what we call the calvaria. That bone is the parietal bone. And then while I'm here, we see that we have a bone here that makes up what you would think of as your cheekbone. We'll call that properly in a little bit. Also encompasses some of this sticky down thing. We'll name that in a little bit. This bone is found in this area of the skull right there on the side over your temporal region. And then nicely enough, that's called the temporal bone. Okay. Back up again to what we refer to as the cheekbone or the the, uh, uh, the arch that comes off of that cheekbone. The cheekbone itself is referred to as the zygomatic, okay? And then the arch that comes back off of that zygomatic bone nicely enough as a zygomatic arch. Now when I look between the bones of the skull, you'll find various sutures. The suture that sits up front, that's between your frontal bone and it separates your two parietal bones. That suture is called your frontal or coronal suture, okay? Coronal. If I look at the posterior aspect, I have a similar suture that kind of corresponds to that coronal one, but on the back side, that suture is referred to as the lambdoid suture, or sometimes you hear it called the lambdoidal suture. So the lambdoidal suture separates the occipital bone from the two parietals. You then have a suture that runs right down through the center of the skull, bisecting it uh, right down the middle. We call that suture that separates the right and left parietal bone, we refer to that as the sagittal suture. And as always, remember spelling counts. Sagittal is one that people mess up a lot. You have one G, two Ts, right? Come back to this temporal bone. The flat part of the temporal bone is referred to as the squamous region. So where the squamous region then ends up articulating with the parietal and some of the frontal bone, we refer to that suture as the squamosal suture, okay? Take a look at the posterior aspect of the skull one more time. We'll find this occipital bone. The only thing from a list standpoint that you find that you have to find back there is this bump that you feel right at the back of the skull. That's called the external occipital protuberance, or your EOP. Okay? It's also referred to as the Inian. Also on the occipital bone, you have to go from the inferior aspect to take a peek at it. Also in the occipital bone is this big, giant, gaping hole on the inferior aspect of the skull. That hole is your foramen magnum, and that's where your medulla oblongata descends to join the spinal cord. Now, if we take a closer look, on either side of that foramen magnum, I have these two smooth, little knuckle-like projections. These two things are referred to as your occipital condyles, and they are what are going to articulate with the lateral mass of atlas. So when you look at someone who has this big giant head sitting on this little teeny tiny neck, the only actual bony connection is right here between the occiput and C1, okay? Now there's an opening the sides of frame and magnum in that occipital bone, and that opening is referred to as the hypoglossal canal. And I'll show you a better view of the hypoglossal canal when we take a look at the skull from the inside. Of course, you'll have one on either side, right and left, where the occipital, I'm sorry, where the hypoglossal nerve will go down to serve motor fu functions of the tongue. We come up to the skull again. We take a look at the anterior aspect, and we have our two big eye sockets, okay? We won't call them eye sockets, though. We're now going to refer to those as the orbit of the eye. And take a close look at the orbit of the eye. This video won't be able to do it justice, but there are many facial bones and skull bones that make up that orbit, and you should know what those bones are for the practical, okay? The superior aspect of the orbit is made up by frontal bone. And this ridge here is actually referred to as the supraorbital margin. Supra, of course, meaning above. Okay? And then when you kind of take a real close look deep in that orbit, your orbit you're going to see two horizontal openings. I have one on the inferior aspect of the orbit, and I have one on the superior aspect of the orbit. The long, flat fissure, that opening on top, is called your superior orbital fissure. The long, flat opening or fissure on the bottom, that's called your inferior orbital fissure. Okay? Now, kind of tough to see on this model, but we also have a left 
and our right frontal bone. And then right in here in the medial aspect of the orbit, we have a real teeny tiny little lacrimal bone. Probably not on this video you'll be able to see it, but you're also going to see part of the ethmoid and you'll see sphenoid bone in there pretty readily um, on our models. When I look at the lateral aspect of the orbit, I'll see that my zygomatic bone helps to form that. And then the inframedial aspect of the orbit is formed by the majority of the maxillary bone. So our upper jaw bone is referred to as the maxilla. We have a left and a right maxilla. And then, of course, we have alveoli, which are the holes for our teeth to sit in. This opening, right below the orbit of the eye, is referred to as the infraorbital foramen. I come over here to the lateral aspect of the skull once again, and I find my zygomatic bone, and then over here, I find my temporal bone. Now, this is a point where people get tripped up all the time. This entire structure between my thumbs is referred to as the zygomatic arch, okay? But the zygomatic arch is made of two bones, or two parts of bones. I've got part of the zygomatic arch that comes from the temporal bone, and I've got part of the zygomatic arch that comes from the zygomatic bone. So the entire structure is zygomatic arch. The part that comes off of the temporal bone is referred to as the zygomatic process. And while not on your list, the part of the arch that comes from the zygomatic bone is called the temporal process. So there's some confusion for you. I have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone plus the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which collectively give us the zygomatic arch. Okay? Take a look at the inferior aspect of the skull. And I can't recall off the top of my head if it's on your list, but I have an opening right here between the right and left maxilla. We call that the incisive foramina. And then over here on either side, I have what are called the palatine, or sometimes you'll see greater palatine foramen. Okay? Um, from the lateral aspect, we find this opening. This opening is referred to as your external auditory canal. Okay? And then I've got a couple sticky down things. Right inferior to that, I have this little teeny tiny skinny one. That is your stylomastoid process. I'm sorry, no it's not, it's your styloid process, brain freeze. And then I have this big giant one, and that big giant one is referred to as your mastoid process, okay? So the mastoid process you can palpate behind your ear, the styloid process you can't feel with palpation. Now, when I go between those two structures, I have an opening, and there it is. That opening that's between the styloid process and the mastoid process, that opening now is called the stylomastoid foramen. And then I think we're about running out of structures for our practical. I do notice, though, this depression right here, which is anterior to the external auditory canal, and that's referred to as the mandibular fossa. And the mandibular fossa is where we get reception for the head of the mandible, or what we call the mandibular condyle, okay? Which gives us what we refer to as our temporal, then mandibular joints, okay? While I have the mandible, we'll take a look at that, and then we'll go to the internal skull. So here sits our mandible. That's the lower jawbone. We only have one, okay? I have this big giant structure that articulates into the mandibular fossa. This is referred to as the mandibular condyle or the head of the mandible. And then anterior to that, I have another sticky up thing, and that's referred to as your coronoid process. Coronoid with an N, okay? Between those two sticky ups, I have what's referred to as the mandibular notch. I've got the ramus of the mandible, which makes up more or less goes down to what would be the angle. And down here I have the body of the mandible, okay? And then this hole that's found on the left and one on the right side of the mandible, those holes are referred to as mental foramina. Remember, mental refers to the chin, okay? So now we'll take a look at the internal skull next.